Ati Allah, Ati Rasulullah, Ati Ramdi Minkum. And always a reminder from myself. And Abdul Quraji Sudaif, O Miskeen, Azalim, Jahal, and for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah from Surat Al Kaf, inshaAllah. The 18th verse, what is this? Verse is 17. I will be a shaytan, a rajim, a bismillah, a rahman, a rahim. وَتَرَى الشَّمْسَ إِذَا تَلَعَتْ تَزَاوَرُ عَنْ كَهْفِهِمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينَ وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ تَقْرِضُهُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ وَهُمْ فَجْوَةٍ مِنْهُمْ ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِ وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم أغلفت الرسول الكريم الحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله the guidance from Surah Al-Kahf about tariqahs and the importance of guidance, the system of guidance is all within the realities of Surat Al-Kahf and the last section of Ayat al kareem in which Allah is stating, He whom Allah guides is rightly guided and he whom He leaves astray means that Allah didn't grant them guidance. So somebody has to realize they may have accepted Islam, they may have done many things but Allah is pointing out, He whom Allah guides is guided. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh And who, he whom Allah didn't grant the secret of guidance, doesn't mean they didn't uh, accept Islam, didn't, doesn't mean they, they achieved many things but they were not guided. Those whom Allah gives the secret of guidance is guidance. Then Allah clarifies the one whom we didn't guide then they have no waliyun murshidun. So this is the dalil for people that say, why you need a wali? Well who says you need a wali? Allah says you need a wali. Waliyun murshidun. So when they say, there's no murshid in Islam, there's no, there's no guide for you, of course there is. Allah stating, as soon as you negate and say, there is no, you fall into the category in which Allah is saying here, and he whom he leaves to go astray has no waliyun murshidun. And that is the immense, immense reality of Surat Al Kahf when Allah before we go into the adab of Sayyidina Khidr and Sayyidina Musa, Allah is clarifying. That when you're guided, you're guided. But 
For those whom don't understand guidance, Allah clarifies, if He's leaving you to go to astray means you don't have a wali, a wakil, a guardian, murshid, that the guide is of a saintly nature. If you haven't been appointed to a saintly guide, Allah is basically describing you're going astray because the the difficulty of guidance and the difficulty of staying on the path to be rightly guided is uh, impossible to traverse by oneself. This is the rule, now Allah is free to do whatever exception Allah wants. But He's laying the foundation for the rule that this satanic dunya that we landed upon because shaitan was sent down, cast down from the heavens upon this abode. And as soon as you land on this abode it's a satanic kingdom. And if you feel that you are free to roam around and that you will find your way on your own, Allah has let you go astray. And that's the danger, that's the one whom is ignorant of their ignorance and they are the most dangerous. The one who's ignorant understands that, Ya Rabbi I can't make it, I don't know what I'm doing, send me guidance. Send me a guidance Ya Rabbi, send me a guide. Then Allah inshaAllah answer and grant the one whom is asking from their ignorance that they don't have. The one who's ignorant of their ignorance is dangerous because it's a double negative means they think they're positive. Right, a double negative in math actually it's a positive. So they're ignorant of the fact that they're ignorant therefore they think they're actually guided. Like a pharaoh, no I don't need it. They don't understand they're sick, they don't understand that this is the abode of shaitan and they don't understand how they are continuously being manipulated. They're being manipulated through their ears, what they hear is not real. The, the continuous what we tried to give as last night Allah is giving the first symbol of entering into that cave is going to be your ears. So then there must be a significant battle for the ears of mankind. And that now is happening, look at the children, look at the children going to school, the, the amount of of social media that is continuously bombarding because it's easy to look at the children then later people can reflect upon themselves because adults have a tendency to be arrogant and say, oh not me, okay then look to the children and see what's the likelihood of their survival of guidance when at a young age they're being bombarded by social pressures, social media, continuous bombardment at school. The reason they want families to both be working is not for women's rights because they don't care for women. If you think these people care for women, they don't care for human beings, why would they care for women? But what they do care is that the woman is not at home to raise her children because they want to raise the children, they want to guide the children, they want to give the directive to the children. So as a result there's no more foundation. When the man goes out and represents the faith, he's the imam, he goes and hunts for his sustenance and the woman stays to take care of the children and rightly guide them from the teachings of the imam and say the good and the bad and instill upon them good characteristics. As a result of her not being home, who do you think is doing that? And therefore is the battle for the ears of mankind. So at a young age people are being indoctrinated, taught what is right and wrong and that becomes the difficulty, that becomes the sickness. That people are being told left and right what, what is correct, what is incorrect, what's right and wrong but not from a heavenly perspective but from the rules of the jungle, the law of the jungle is prevailing. Whatever is popular today that's what they'll be taught. Not that which is eternal and has nothing to do with popularity. Allah's rules have nothing to do with the popularity of mankind liking it or not liking it. 
it's an eternal reality based on Allah's creation of us. And when they're not listening to that reality then imagine what type of programming is now coming in to their hearing. And that's all that shaitan needed. Once he controls the hearing and controls what the person is listening to, the likelihood of that servant ever reaching guidance is very unlikely and that's why he's starting at such a young age. He wants to bombard men with misguidance, not guidance. And Allah is clarifying the system of guidance because to be from Ashab al-Kahf that Allah saying, when any, any time there's a difficulty and badness and the people are calling you to a belief other than Allah other than, than believing in God Almighty, the Divine, the Creator, the oneness of that, take yourself to a cave, mean retreat. The party of Allah Hezbollah is to go down, not up. Their fight will be down, below ground. And you see that even on the earth when they fight they're going to go underground to protect themselves from shaitan bombarding upon the air. Means that Allah even shows the sign on the outside and inside. Means you see the signs of how they fight outside onto how Allah wants you to fight within yourself. Outside you can't fight outside because shaitan has air superiority, so right? If you're fighting outside, oh shaitan going to bombard you from everything. He's going to hit you with radios, he's going to hit you with TV, he's going to hit you with social media. How can you fight outside? So I'm going to shut off all these shaitans and then worship Allah You lost that battle and that's these Wahhabi people. They think that they'll come out and tell everybody everything is haram. And they're getting picked off like a, like a little fly by shaitan. And that's not what Allah gave as a directive. Allah said, when you see the oppression of, of shaitan and his overwhelming force to make you believe what he believes, take yourself to the cave. Run, run to the cave. And that's why then awliyaullah's teachings and how they were taught is there's no way to fight shaitan on the outside, cut the TV, cut the radio, make everybody turn off their TV, make everybody turn off their radios, pull your pants up a little bit higher, make everything is haram but then you become a hypocrite because it's okay for you to do and not for others to do. They know that that's not the battle. Allah is giving an ancient directive in Holy Qur'an, leave that shaitan, you are not powerful to fight shaitan. You go to the cave. Then what Allah gave in Ayat al Kareem, you go to the cave and the, in the ayah before that the youth said to one another and we are withdrawn, we will withdraw from them that which they worship other than Allah and retreat to the cave, your Lord will spread His mercy upon you and will prepare your affairs. Means Allah gave the directive, it is to go fight shaitan outside, make everybody turn everything off, come against the satanic system. Allah gave the directive, go within the cave, go within your cave. Do you know your cave? Your cave is your heart, go within your heart. Allah will shower a rahmah upon you. And most important is Allah will set your affairs to be correct. Most people say, Shaykh I can't follow this way, I have to make a lot of money, I have a lot of things, I have a lot of responsibilities. But Allah there's no shaykh talking now, Allah in the 16th verse, the verse we just recited before this one is teaching, go to the cave. In the cave we will shower you with the mercy. So we talked before, what is the mercy? Means the light of Sayyidina Muhammad is in your heart waiting for you.
enter into your heart, who will be greeting you is this love of Sayyidina Muhammad the mercy of Allah That's why the shaykhs are teaching and giving the systems and the salawats that go to the heart. Prophet is waiting for you and don't worry Allah will settle your affairs. That's where the barakah, that's where the secret is that if you enter into that cave and to be dressed by that rahmah, blessed by that rahmah, you're talking about the one whom issues the sustenance for all of entire creation, the one who settles all affairs, the one whom settles all debts, the one whom gives everything to the one whom knows or doesn't know, Rabbul Mu'mineen wa Rabbul Kafireen means you're entering into the presence of the Lord of power, Allah's immense power under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Allah is teaching for us that when you enter into that cave, don't worry, we're going to dress you from a rahmah and settle all your affairs. Means everything will begin to be handled. The barakah and the immense reality of that presence will begin to settle the servant's life in accordance to what Allah wants and not what they want, not what they want from under the influence of shaitan. And say, Shaykh I have to do these things, maybe they're not so halal, maybe it's, it's, it's shaitan wanting me to do that. No Allah said, enter the cave, the abundance of Allah's oceans can never be understood and Allah will settle all the affairs, Allah will make everything to be correct, Allah will make everything to be perfected. So means that this is an immense, immense reality of guidance and the one whom is guiding Allah will send them to awliyaullah whom they've been trained to give guidance. So not every guide is a wali and not every wali is a guide. There are awliya who say, oh this we know is an awliya but he's not a guide, means his authority is not to guide, he may be hidden, he may be something that Allah has him doing privately and secretly. And not everyone whom is pretending to guide people are of that reality. So when Allah says, we want to, when we want to guide you, we will put you into the hands of waliyun murshidun, those whom they have their permission and ijazas of guidance and that they reached these levels of knowledges and realities and that their soul is a connected soul. Not connected from dunya but connected into akhirah and the oceans of malakut and the angelic realm. Their guidance comes from the angelic realm, the world of light and souls, not the world of body. The world of body is, is like a guide with a, a phone, just a regular mobile phone. As soon as he goes 20 feet in the wrong territory, his phone loses service. That's not Allah's guidance. Allah's guidance are these individuals that have satellite phones. No matter where they are on earth, they're receiving their signal. They don't enter into zones that are cut off or not cut off. Their plan is a cellular plan, means their connection comes from above. Not hat the dunya, where just there's a, a, a there's a connection on dunya that sort of is buffering towards people. This level of wilayat and, and guidance is that their connection is from malakut, from the heavens coming down upon them. Doesn't matter where they walk, there's guidance coming to them. There are no zones that are blocked. There are no territories that are blocked. Because Allah is from the oceans of malakut, this authority and this power is flowing within their heart and their souls. Allah then gives reference that these are the ones whom will rightly guide. When Allah wants a servant rightly guided into the oceans of these realities, this is the characteristic. We pray that Allah give us a, a deeper understanding of the importance of the cave. And in our life to enter into the cave, in our life to enter into these realities, to have this ishq and muhabbat. When, when we hear all these things we begin to understand the immense importance of the love of Prophet 
That's why this cave its realities is now and Rabbil Awal opens the next month. Because you have to understand that you're entering the cave, Allah is asking that uh, every, every time in your life leave that which they worship and enter into your cave and we shall spread out a mercy for you. And then what happens in the next month? Rabbil Awal opens. The kingdom opens, the oceans of reality open, the light of Prophet is blossoming within the heart and the soul of the individual. That's why we said the immense reality of Mawlid and Nabi it's the spark within everyone's heart. As soon as you celebrate the milad and acknowledge the milad, acknowledge this light, it's a light that will be born within each person's soul and reality. Their Muhammadan reality is an ignition of a light within themselves that you don't have the ability to fight in this dunya, you don't have the ability to guide yourself. What we need is Muhammadun Rasulullah within our being, within our heart, within our entire existence, the milad and the mawlid the Nabi is that opening. And Allah gives us every year that opportunity that ignite that reality within yourself, acknowledge the importance of Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to love Prophet more than we love ourselves. In a world where everything is about myself and my face and my identity, shaitan is making it a thousand times more difficult for people to become selfless and more people becoming selfish. So it becomes you can see how important the reality is, is by where shaitan is focusing. If this wasn't important why would shaitan have all of his social media based on self and selfishness and selfie and taking a picture of yourself and identifying yourself and self-importance and what you want, shaitan knows that's the key. That's the entire key of this reality that for the ocean of selflessness he wants to destroy that and make it selfishness so that they cannot reach the cave and they cannot enter into that reality. We pray that Allah give us a strength and a blessing to reach to these realities and to understand the importance of the cave and, and the, the realities of what Allah has given to us to enter into that. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati wa yasifu. As-salamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri surat al-Fatih. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.